Hi, I'm Crafty Patty, and I'm here with another video to show you even more ways to use up your scraps of fabric. I've been making ice packs for those sore bones and sprained ankles. I've been making heating bags for those sore backs and sore tummies. And I've been making a shoulder bag that heats up in the microwave and just feels wonderful on your neck. So stay tuned and I'm going to show you how to make these gifts for under three dollars. Stay tuned. You'll be needing some fabric for the inside of your bag and we're going to be also making an outer bag so you can take the outer bag off and wash it whenever wanted. I'm using 100% quilting cotton. You can use unbleached cotton, you can use muslin, you can use whatever you want, whatever you can find in a cheap price because this is just the inside of the bag. For the inside of your bag, you'll be needing a piece of material that is 23 inches long and 10 and a half inches wide. And you will be folding that piece of material in half. And so if you have a piece of material and you want to cut it when it's already on the fold, then by all means, just place it on the fold of the fabric and then cut your five and a quarter inches. And here's a visual for you. Here's your material. Once you've got it folded in half, this is on the fold. And you've got 23 inches long, and you've got five and one quarter inches for your length. I'm using 100% quilting cotton, and you can just find coordinating pieces. We might choose to make four sections in different colors to make it look more like a quilted bag or you can choose to have one bag in one solid piece of fabric. And you'll be needing approximately the same amount of fabric that you do for the inside bag, but allow a little bit more for the bag to be a little bit bigger. And we're gonna add extra length on the end so we can have a little flip over pillow casing. So you'll need a little bit more fabric for your outer bag. You can use rice inside your heating bags, or you can use feed corn. I prefer to use the feed corn for one reason. I love the smell of it when it heats up because it smells a little bit like popcorn. And it's a lot cheaper. It was under $2. And to buy rice, it's going to cost a lot more than that. The feed corn, it looks like this. It's been dried and it's basically used for feeding livestock. I'm just going to pour my corn onto a towel. Just going to spread it out. And I'm just going to bring the other end of the towel and just push it back and forth. And this will help to get that white powder off of the corn. Clean it up just a little bit. I do not want to wet this because my concern is if there's any little bit of moisture in that corn, I do not want it to get moldy inside the bag. So I don't trust getting it wet. I know some people do wash it before they put it in their bags, but I choose not to do that. The other thing you would want to do is take out the little pieces of foreign material that are broken pieces of the corn or pieces of corn stalks or things like that. So out of my eight cups of corn, this is all the good corn left, and this is basically what I rejected, which is pretty good. It was fairly clean. I'm also going to reject anything that's on the round side, like a round type of poppy kernel like this. I mean, I've never ever had a kernel pop, but we don't need to take the chance. So reject the little tiny ones that haven't developed into a nice flat piece of corn like this. The first thing you're going to want to do is take your piece of fabric 
and turn it on to the, the short side. I'm going to just fold over one quarter inch, iron it in place, and fold over again, and iron in place. And this is the wrong side of your fabric. Now we've come and folded it back in half again with our ironed over seam on the edge here and we'll just pin in place and we'll be taking it to the sewing machine and we're going to sew along one quarter inch starting here and go along, pivot and then come along to the bottom and sew across one quarter inch. So when you get close to your corner, I'm going to sew up to my needles at about a quarter inch. Needles down, foot is up, pivot, foot is down, and continue sewing. This is the end where you fold it over your edges, so we don't want to trim those corners, but you can trim your corners on the other end of your bag just so it makes a nice corner. So we're just trimming right up to your sew line and just take a corner off, but don't cut into that sew line. And on this edge, it'll just be half. I'm now going to turn this to the right side. So I'm going to take the bottom of my bag and just open it up a little bit. I'm going to place the end of my knitting needle into the bag and I'm just going to work my bag to both sides of it and it makes for an easy turning of the bag. And there it is. And I'll use my knitting needle just to go back in and even out my corners. I'm going to divide the inside bag into four equal sections because I'm going to put one cup of corn in each of these sections and then sew it so it's contained, so it doesn't all move around to one edge of the bag. So I've worked it out that we'll have one sewing line at five and a half inches, one at 11 inches, and one at 16 and a half inches, or you can follow in centimeters if that's preferred. So I'm going to use my unique fast fade pen just to draw a line so I've got a sewing guide. So our first one was at five and a half. So we're just gonna draw a line in here and a guide so I can use that for sewing. Our next one was at 11. And 16 and a half. So now I've got my guidelines and that's where I'm going to be sewing along to keep one cup of corn in this section. Measured up one cup of corn and I'll just pour that right into the bag. To help contain the corn in this section, I'm just going to place a couple pins. I've also placed just a couple of my canvas blocks. It's just a little lower than the sewing machine here, which is perfect. And then I can place my bag on the top there and it will help to not pull because there's a bit of weight in the bag. Otherwise, if I don't have those there, it's gonna be pulling on the bag and a little bit harder to sew. So I'm just matching up the line that I've drawn. Now I can easily just sew right along that line.
And for the last section of corn, that's where we've folded over a quarter inch and another quarter inch. And I'm just going to be sewing close to the edge along here and then doing another line of sewing close to the edge to secure the corn inside the bag. And there's my two rows of sewing, one close to the quarter inch seam and another one further up. And that will enclose my corn on that last section. And there's our finished inside bag with four sections of contained corn. So they're not gonna all flip around and all end up on this end or that end of the bag. So I found some scrap pieces of fabric that'll go together quite nicely. And I've now cut eight squares, all measuring five and three quarters by six inches. And I've got one smaller piece that measures five and three quarters by four inches. This will be added on so we make that pillowcase fold to enclose our inside bag. So now all you're gonna do is you're gonna sew this strip together and then you'll sew this strip together. Placing right sides to right sides, sewing one quarter inch seams. Once you've got that one done, you're gonna come and add this one again and add one quarter inch seams until you've got all your pieces sewed together. I've got all my pieces sewed together to make two strips. There they are. And we're gonna take those to the ironing board and just iron open all these seams. If you don't want to use up small pieces of scraps and you don't want to do this patchwork and you want to make just a solid color in one piece of fabric, then your option is cut one piece of fabric 25 and 3 quarter inches by 5 and 3 quarters and cut a second piece which is 22 inches by 5 and 3 quarters. And I've included the centimeters for those that work in centimeters. On your extra little piece, we're going to turn this under one quarter inch, another quarter inch, and I'm going to press it with the iron first. And I'm just gonna take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch along here and just keep that folded edge in place now. So we finished the opening part of our bag by folding it over a quarter and a quarter and sewing it in place. And this will also be the opening end of our bag. Again, we're gonna iron over a quarter and a quarter and then sew this in place as well. So we have a finished edge. Now we're wanting to put right side spacing, so flip one of them over. And now this one, the right side is here. So right sides together. And then what you're gonna to try to do is match up your seams from the one side to the other side. So you get a nice quilted looking patchwork. And this is your section that's longer than here. So what we're gonna do now is just fold this over, match up to the other side, so it's the same distance, and then pin that in place. Once you've got it all pinned together, this is your opening where you're going to slip in your inner bag. So we're going to start sewing here, go all the way down, pivot on your quarter, pivot on this corner and come up and stop. And if you have a presser quilting foot then uh, this is a good time to use it so you can keep your quilting lines together. If not, just use your regular presser foot. Stop one quarter inch away, pivot, and back along the bottom. Now 
one quarter inch away, lift, pivot, and down the other side. And trim your corners right up to your sewing line, but don't cut into your sewing line. And just, just trim the bottom of your bag. You don't need to trim the top. And I'm going to trim my bag again with the end of my knitting needle. So I'm just going to open up the bottom of the bag just to get it started so I can place the needle here. And then I'm just going to work my sides right over and pull it through. And again with the end of my knitting needle, We'll just poke out our corners. How about we go in with that lovely method again and we're just going to get a nice start on the bottom of the bag. Use the end of your needle and we're going to again bring this up. To the end like so. And now I've got this that I can grab onto. So I'm going to hold on to this. Like so. And then I'm going to come in here and I can feel this part and this part. So I'm going to hold on to it. I'm holding on to the end of my bag and the end of the outer bag, and then I can pull it over. And you can just shake down the last part of it. Fill up the end. And then on this part, little pocket that we made inside that's where you're going to slip your bag so this bag is going to go into that little pocket and it'll hold your bag in place there you go so it's not going to come out now we just have to put it in the microwave I've just heated up my neck shoulder pack for two minutes in my microwave, which is perfect for this size bag, but you may have to alter the time depending on the wattage of your microwave. Oh, this feels so good. I've been making these packs for relatives and friends for so, so many years, and I just love them. I could not live without this. They make wonderful gifts, and they're so inexpensive to make. If you are going to make these for gifts though, I suggest that you write up a little card for the care and all the instructions on how to use them. I've made some cards up. I'm going to show them to you and feel free to copy the information and make up your own cards. I use the Avery Business Card Stock. The number is 38871 and this will give you 10 cards. What I do is I bring up the template on my computer and I type out the info that I want on the front of the card. I save the document and then I do a save as and I write up the info I want for the back of the card. And this is what your 10 up business card will look like after you've printed the text that you want. This is the wording I use for the front of the card. And it gives them some ideas on how to use it hot and how to use it cold. And of course, I call them Patty Packs because that's my first name. And I just thought it had a nice little jingle to it. And this is the wording I have chosen for the back of the card. It's very important that you don't overheat your bag as it will scorch. And it's not necessary. Two to three minutes is plenty long enough. And as I mentioned, also for the cold packs, it doesn't take on the smell of the freezer if you put them in a freezer bag. And of course, it keeps your corn bag dry. And I've also included some other important information. 
So feel free to copy the wording I've used or change it up to suit yourself. But it's very important that you do hand out these care instructions with your bag. The Avery business card templates have a perforated edge around each card. So all you need to do is just fold your cards and they will pop right out. And now you will have a little information card that explains what it is, how to use it, and important information on the back. So make sure that you do give these with all your gifts so they are used properly. I've showed you how to make the next shoulder bag and you can stop watching now if you want. You've got the information you need. But if you want to see how I made these darling little ice packs, then continue to watch. And then further on the video, I will also show you how to make a larger pack sewn a little bit differently for the back. And here's another way to use up some scraps. We use the squares to make the neck bag. Now I've got some more corn, so now I've decided to make up some ice packs. So we need to have some fabric that's wide enough. So we're just gonna sew two pieces together, right sides together, and it'll be wide enough now to fit these bags. You can make your ice bags any size you want. You can make them more into a square or make them longer like I've got them here. It doesn't really matter. So you make it any way you want to and then once you're going to make your outside bag, just cut your fabric so you've got at least a quarter inch around and I'm leaving a little bit extra here so it's not real stuck when you try to put your bag, the inside bag, into the outside bag. On this side, you're just going to leave enough to fold over a quarter inch twice, which means half an inch. So just leave a half an inch and then you're good to go. Fold this edge under twice and this piece is going to be the piece that we need to make the little pillow fold. So we're going to leave more room on the end of this one so we can bring in our little flap. So we'll leave an extra three inches and make this three inches longer. And turn this under a quarter and a quarter and the same with this one. We've got our right sides together and this is the longer piece that we're folding in so we can tuck in our bag nicely. And again we're going to Leave this edge open and sew around and you're done. And there we have two darling little ice packs ready for the freezer. Using up our scraps of fabric and they turned out really cute. If you're going to put these in the freezer, I would suggest you put them in a Ziploc bag or a container that's airtight so they don't take on the smell of the freezer and pop those into your freezer and you'll be ready for that next injury or when you want to put one on your wrist or a sore ankle and you'll be ready to go. Okay so we've made a nice heating pad for our shoulders. We've made ice packs for sprained wrists or ankles. How about if you've got a sore back? So I'm going to make a longer one that will fit right along the back of my lower back. And, or you can place it the long way for your back. So this time I've made it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight inches by 18 inches. And I'm gonna sew at every three inches. And I'm gonna fill the bag this way this time. So I'm sewing my lines first and then we're going to add our corn and then we'll seal up the bag. Well here's a scrap piece of fabric that I've been wanting to use for many many years and I finally get to have a use for it. 
So I'm going to cut strips here. I can cut a strip down here maybe, some out of this section, and see if I've got enough to make a nice little cover for my pack for heating the back. And out of that piece of material, this is what I have left. I just kept making strips and piecing it and piecing it until I have the size that I needed. And as you can see, all the joins I've got here, I've got my join here, I've got a join all along here, one down here, another one here, another one here, but it works. I mean, it might look pretty funky and wild, but I've got some memory to this piece of fabric and I'm really happy that I'm getting to use it. So I'm going to put this bag together and I'll have my nice heating pack for my bag. Well, there's my bag all completed with all those little scraps of fabric and it works. What a great way to use up those scraps. This particular bag has got four and a half cups of corn, I think I used in this one, and I heated this in the microwave for two and a half minutes. And this shoulder pad we heat for two minutes. So that's plenty long enough. So we've made a backpack, a shoulder bag, and two that can go in the freezer to act as an ice pack. All of this for under $3 because you're using up your scraps of fabric and a bag of corn is gonna be under $3. So this is a really inexpensive way to make great gifts for your friends and family. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you give me a thumbs up and stay tuned for more great videos. Bye-bye.